and reintegration of minor offenders in Metro Manila, basis for policy enhancement. Children in jail continue to be a significant problem in the Philippines. There are no easy solutions to this problem, especially when children are in connivance with their parents and guardians. Now, there are actually 50, more than 50,000 children in the Philippines which have been arrested and detained. Most of them are charged with minor crimes like petty theft, minor crimes like petty thefts, living solvents, and vagrancy. Some face more serious cases, those that merit a 12-year detention at the Intensive Juvenile Intervention and Support Center. Minors are not exempted from the law. And Republic Act 9344 is vital in covering different stages involving children at risk and children in conflict with the law. So these children at risk are those children which are abandoned by their parents, who are neglected, who are also out of the streets, who are also uh, do not go to schools, and also children in conflict with the law are those children who have um, been um, uh, given some offenses like um, when when they have when a child is put in jail together with hardened criminals, it can go stop me. The study sought to determine the situation of the juvenile offenders in their rehabilitation centers in Metro Manila as to the level of adequacy of facilities and equipment and of the programs and services as perceived by the respondent inmates. Moreover, the study attempted to assess the extent of the juvenile offenders' reintegration to the mainstream. Hence, the study endeavors to propose an alternative diversion scheme to strengthen the programs and services of the rehabilitation centers and prepare the juvenile offenders to go back to the mainstream and become responsible and good citizens. Now for the statement of the problem, what is the level of adequacy of facilities and equipment as perceived by the juvenile offenders in the rehabilitation centers in Metro Manila in terms of the following variables. So we have the physical facilities, personal effects, food and water supply, health facilities, educational materials, recreational materials. The second question, what is the level of effectiveness of the following programs and services as perceived by the juvenile offenders in terms of the following variables? Home life programs, social services, health and medical services, non-formal education program, livelihood program, spiritual, moral training, recreational program, custodial care program. The third question, what is the extent of the juvenile offenders reintegration to the mainstream of the society as perceived by themselves in terms of the following? The personal desire, assurance, and readiness. Based on the findings, what alternative diversion scheme may be proposed to strengthen the rehabilitation centers, programs, services in Metro Manila? Now, I have here the theoretical framework, and there are several theories which has, which has been anchored for my study. We have rehabilitation, and uh, there are three ideas. For intervention, it is a plan explicitly undertaken. Intervention targets to change some aspects of the offender that is thought to be caused, are thought to cause the, founder, the offender's criminality. <clears throat> the intervention is intended to make the offender less likely to break the law in the future. Another one is diversion, which is primarily grounded in two different theories. It is based on labeling principles dating back to Tanibam. This is to minimize the effects of labeling associated with offending and to limit the opportunities youths have to associate with antisocial peers by reducing their contact and exposure to the juvenile justice. Another is labeling theory. 
from Becker, it is on stigma and negative consequence, the Merck on secondary deviance. Also another is by Becker, uh, also well, uh, the differential session theory that argues that youth can learn anti-social attitudes and behaviors by associating with peers who exhibit such behavior. As to my methodology, I have made use of the descriptive survey research, um, which utilized, uh, I utilized questionnaire, uh, unstructured interviews, and documentary ana analysis. Statistical treated, uh, treatment was percentage, a uh, weighted mean. There are 100 respondents, which were randomly selected from the three youth homes in Metro Manila. We have Mulava Youth Home in Quezon City. We also have Manila Youth Reception Center and uh, Pasay City uh, Youth Home. Five point record scale was used to assess the level of adequacy of the facilities and equipment, the level of effectiveness of rehabilitation programs and services, the extent of the reintegration of the juvenile offenders to the mainstream of the society. So the findings of the study, the level of adequacy of facilities in terms of personal effects, there are actually uh, 2.20 is inadequate for personal effects, educational materials 3.03 inadequate, recreational materials 2.28 inadequate. So for all of uh, the facilities, uh, there are actually um, findings that most of the um, Facilities like personal, educational, and recreational are inadequate. Then, considering all the levels of adequacy of uh, facilities and equipment of the rehabilitation centers met in Metro Manila, the inmates perceived it as slightly adequate with weighted mean of 3.02. <coughs> Registered social workers facilitate casework and group work with the detained youth together with their parents. Family as well as community resources are explored in order to restore the juvenile offenders' social functioning and prepare them for their eventual reintegration to their respective family and community. However, the respondents averred that the juvenile justice system is quite not effective. Some of the juvenile offenders have no available written case studies. There is an inadequacy in the number of social workers in the youth homes where they belong. Respondents claim that not all of them were provided with the legal assistance. Their families need to seek the services of private lawyers to defend them in court. Now, with regard to non-formal education program, which was also perceived by 78 uh, of the inmates as slightly effective, they claim that there is insufficient number of instructors as well as poor instructional materials. Noteworthy to mention is the custodial program, which was perceived by the inmates as effective. As to the respondents, residents' extent of reintegration to the mainstream of the society in terms of their personal desire, they rated it as very high, 72% or most of them really wanted to be reintegrated in the core of the society and to become better citizens when they go back to the mainstream, while the rest of the respondent inmates would prefer to stay in the rehabilitation center rather than go back to their families or communities and face the negative perception of the society and difficult challenges of life. Moreover, only 12% of the juvenile offenders rated assurance as slightly high. They contended that they are not so sure about their situation outside the center. They lack the strong feeling of confidence about themselves or about others towards them. They aver that they need the assurance of their families and the society to completely accept and support them when they go back to the mainstream of the society. They asserted further that one of the major causes of their delinquency is poverty, where they are pushed beyond their limits just to survive. In terms of readiness, only 16 
of the inmates assessed it as high, which conveys that they are quite ready to go back to the mainstream and asserted further that they are doing their best to improve their way of life. As of the proposed alternative diversion scheme to address the present situation of the juvenile offenders in the rehabilitation centers in Metro Manila, the following alternative diversion scheme is highly proposed, the implementation of a holistic, individualized treatment program with intensive and comprehensive services. The engagement of a multidisciplinary team which consists of experienced youth caseworkers, medical doctors, licensed psychologists, licensed educational and guidance counselors. The program and services may include but not limited to skills training, formal education, and other activities. Integration of an intensive community-based services which respond to the special needs, problems, interests, and concerns of children which offer, offer appropriate counseling and guidance to CICL to prevent children in conflict with the law from offending and re-offending, or what we call recidivism. So as to my recommendations, in the light of the findings and conclusions, the following are hereby recommended. Conduct regular inspections of detention and rehabilitation facilities and to undertake on-the-spot inspections on LGU or the local government unit's own initiative in order to check compliance with the standards provided in RA 9344 and RA 10630 to make the necessary recommendations to the appropriate agencies. The second one, periodically develop a comprehensive three to five national juvenile intervention program with the participation of government agencies, concerned NGOs, and youth organizations. Trained specialists should be employed to ascertain the extent of physical and psychological causes of delinquency so that proper remedies may be provided. Establish a centralized information management system specifying the age and nature of the offenses needed in gathering information and data on the best practices applied and performed by the LGUs as basis for a periodic development of appropriate intervention and diversion programs. The proposed alternative diversion scheme to address the present situation in the rehabilitation centers may be considered in drafting an LGU juvenile intervention and diversion program. That's all, and thank you. Wow, we have 15 minutes for our Q&A.